Back in Cary, North Carolina, let's take a look at starting lineups. First, Lori, for Duke tonight. Yeah, they're going to be in their typical 4-3-3. We're going to see Groff and Jones provide the cover of the back line. That's going to be the give the license for Migley and Graham to get forward. We know up top Michelle Cooper, she's going to lead the line, but it's been Kat Rader, the freshman of the year. 11 goals, 3 assists. Been excellent in terms of playing off of Cooper, whether she comes in underneath or threatens in behind with the final pass from Cooper. And then for North Carolina, also in a 4-3-3, Julia Dorsey comes back into the starting lineup on that back line after missing the past four games due to injury. Much of what North Carolina wants to do goes through Sam Meza. Can she get on the ball, dictate the tempo? And then up top, Avery Patterson. She's the one that's going to lead the line. Plays on the left side, but cuts inside. We'll look for that final pass with nine goals, three assists. Yeah, big to have Sam Meza back in there. Number one in the midfield for North Carolina. She's been out the last couple of matches, has really just been beat up as this season has gone along. So Hanson Dorrance has had to figure out when and where he can rest her. Apparently he played his cards right as the Tar Heels come in here as the number one seed. Hanson in North Carolina, of course, no stranger to ACC championships. This co-championship with Florida State, their 25th ACC regular season title. And Robbie Church leading the Duke Blue Devils. Two longtime rivals here on the sideline against one another. His Blue Devil team coming in as the five seed. Six, two and two record in conference play this year. And remember, we told you that loss to North Carolina did not count in the conference record. That was a non-conference matchup. These teams want to play each other, Lori. They'd like to do it twice each year in the regular season if they could. Well, they get that second opportunity now with a spot in the final on the line. Yeah, and you, you really wonder how Duke's going to come out. We spoke about it in the open, Jen, just about Duke losing 3-0, not being able to really provide much in the attack in that game early in September, but then also have never been able to beat North Carolina in the ACC tournament. First 15, 20 minutes are going to be incredibly important for this side, especially to get this player, Michelle Cooper, involved in the game. Yeah, I thought something that was really significant, you and I got to call that game in the regular season. It is the only game in Michelle Cooper's career she did not record a shot against the Tar Heels. And talking to Robbie this morning, he said, you know, we know we've got to do better. We have to create more. We've got to give her an opportunity to show her special qualities. Yeah, and a lot of that comes through possession. This is a team that played in a three back early on in the season against North Carolina. We'll see them in the 4-3-3, a little bit more defensive presence, but then also the ability to be able to build out of the back and then hopefully find players like Sophie Jones to find some space to keep possession at times because they have been successful on the counter attack, but can they hold on to it, not allow for North Carolina to get into the attack as often as we saw in that September game? North Carolina coming in a bit more rested. You earned that as the top seed. Top two seeds had a bye, whereas Duke had to play in a quarterfinal match on the road at Virginia on Sunday, picking up a 2-1 win there against a very good Virginia team. Just about ready to go here from Wake Med Soccer Park. A beautiful day in Cary, North Carolina. Not a far drive for either of these two teams. And we're off. Blue Devils in their signature blue, white shorts, and North Carolina in their signature Carolina blue. Here is Kat Raider. She and Cooper have combined to score the last eight goals for the Blue Devils, and this is the kind of ball Cooper can feast on. One kick touch across. Love her vision, though. Immediately put it in the middle and sets up a corner kick. Well, this is something that we've seen Cooper do all season long, threatening behind, but then just the, the presence of mind to get her head up quickly to understand where her teammates are. Great ball in behind to unleash Michelle Cooper for that ball across and earn the first goal corner kick of the game. Mackenzie Pluck, a senior graduate student, will take it. Curls it in toward the goal. It is punched up, Emmy Allen. Having to make a play on it in goal for North Carolina. Blue Devils still looking for more. They know set pieces are one of the areas that they really need to dominate in this game because they have not been creating at the rate that North Carolina has this season. So taking their chances when they do get corner kicks, free kicks, going to be important. And Mackenzie Pluck, who just took that corner, Number one all time in appearances for Duke in her career, over 100. 
and also ranking fifth in assists, so you know she relishes those opportunities. Emmy Allen, the redshirt freshman goalkeeper for the Tar Heels. Boots it up, winds up out of play. Delaney Graham, and here's Sophie Jones. How much will number seven be on the ball and in the mix for Duke? That's one of the things you're looking for, Lori. Anything else here early that you've got your eye on? Well, primarily what the midfield battle looks like for both of these teams. And at times, we've talked about Michelle Cooper likes to stretch in behind, but will we see her drop a little bit deeper to create that overload in the midfield? Both of these teams playing the same formation, so it should be even numbers. But that is an area that both teams want to dominate in, and who can get a hold of this game early? You mentioned Sophie Jones. That is a player that Duke wants to get on the ball. She can make the decisions on if they're going to go quickly into the attack or are they going to slow things down, recycle the ball, move it side to side, and hold on to possession. There is Sophie Jones. Got it up to Maggie Graham. Raider. Trying to test that Carolina back line. Holds it up, though. Cooper. Goes out to Olivia Migley, number 10 for the Blue Devils. And it's a good start from the Blue Devils, just starting to move the ball, being confident when they do have possession. Going to have to see this throughout the game from this Duke side, knowing that North Carolina has line changes, they have a deep squad that they can bring players on. There's a lot of intensity to this game. Really strong year for North Carolina, 15 and three overall, eight and two in conference play to tie at the top along with Florida State. And the numbers that you will see in the graphics throughout this ACC championship, those are the seeds. And I have to make that clarification because we have so many teams that could have very similar rankings. North Carolina is ranked number two in the latest national rankings, Duke number eight. That's another thing too, Duke saying they knew they were gonna have to be physical. They felt they got a little bit manhandled in the regular season meeting, seven teams. It's a long list right now, ranked in the ACC. So it is not a matter of if we will see more teams from the ACC than made the ACC tournament in the NCAA, but how many? Nine teams from the conference going last year. Yeah, and I would ar argue that this has been the most competitive in the ACC this year, just the fine margins each team. And we talk about physicality within this game these two teams matching up and just the little things that give you an edge to be able to get the result like perhaps set pieces we saw one a few moments ago for duke and their first real trip down the field now it'll be north carolina's turn and you keep your eye on tori hansen jen number 22 had a big goal in that 3-0 win earlier in september it was off a corner that set up that goal for Hansen, and she has been so good. Second leading scorer for the Tar Heels, and she does it primarily on penalty kicks and corner kicks. This ball's still in the box, headed back, and Ruthie Jones does make a play, keeps it in. Veteran goalkeeper for the Blue Devils in her senior year out of Charlotte, North Carolina. All ACC second team selection and goal for the Blue Devils. Two shades of blue. Isabel Cox getting the start, gets the ball back in the box. Player going down for North Carolina. There is no whistle from our referee, Ashley Cedro. Number 19, Colton driving out of the midfield. It opens up the space. Wincox just holds up a run to be able to find that little through ball. 
the referee was was right there, decided to the no call. A good build up play, and I think that's for the North Carolina team. A lot more space in behind, especially with the Blue Devils looking to press early on in this game. Something to be mindful of of a player like Cox. Good recognition off of that early ball, just to let it roll, find the space in behind. This is a much more aggressive looking Duke team than we've seen recently. Saw the Blue Devils in their regular season finale on the road at Notre Dame. Notre Dame, by the way, coming up in our second semifinal, taking on Florida State. That should be another great matchup, but it was a 2-2 draw in South Bend between Duke and Notre Dame in that match. And really, that was Duke capitalizing on two magic moments by two special players in Michelle Cooper and Kat Rader. This game, they seem like they're willing to play a bit higher, force the issue a little more, at least here at the outset. Well, at times throughout the season, you want to be able to rely on those players. You have the ACC Player of the Year, the Freshman of the Year, two incredibly special players up top to rely on their brilliance every once in a while is, is an X factor for this Duke team. But this is what feels like the makeup of their team, to be able to press higher and be able to put teams under pressure and utilize their compactness. Oh, boy, Sam has a left wide open as it is the Tar Heels quickly moving the ball down the field in the attack. Avery Patterson eventually stopped, but North Carolina still in possession. And it was a good look for North Carolina just on how to capitalize, though, once they do break the initial line of pressure from the Duke Blue Devils, because they do get stretched. For a team that has sat back and stayed compact a lot of the year, they need to make sure the Duke Blue Devils do that when they press higher up the field. Can't leave themselves exposed against this North Carolina team that can break the lines. Hanson with Cooper breathing down her neck. Tar Heels come in having won their last six in a row. And we're out to the regular season championship. And you mentioned how competitive it was. I mean, that final Thursday night a week ago, we were just looking to see how the pieces would fall, getting deep into the tiebreakers. Notre Dame had a chance also to tie for that regular season title, along with Florida State and North Carolina. They wound up as the three seed, and I think gives them a little bit of extra fire coming in here. We'll see how that plays out later tonight. <laughs> Foul from the Blue Devils gives the set piece to the Tar Heels. Tessa Delarose, member of the All-ACC third team and freshman team, and this is her first year with the Tar Heels. She's shown off what she can do with her left foot all season long. She drives it into the box. The header as Hansen was well marked that time. Katie Groff for the defensive responsibilities for Duke. Yeah, well done from Groff, just to stay touch tight on Hansen, see it the entire way, and then get ahead on it first. Does send it out for another corner kick, but the last person you want with a free header is Hansen, and exactly what you have to do to get a body on Hansen, don't allow her to get a good look, easy look on frame. Emily Moxley from the corner, second of the match for the Tar Heels, punched away by Jones. Back in the box, there for the taking, but out of bounds. And Duke is incredibly lucky, because there's a lot of times off the initial ball in from a corner kick, it's well defended, but then there's a second phase where you start to lose your marks, just a little bit of miscommunication. That one makes its way through the traffic and just trickles wide of the post for North Carolina. Set pieces will be an important piece to this game for both of these sides, making the most of their opportunities, but defensively just making sure that they stay marked, keep themselves tight, and communication will be key as well.
both teams trying to find their way into this match. Scoreless so far. Neither team yet to record a shot. Patterson didn't get far. Meza there to pick up the slack. Emily Colton, she'll go back as well. No break this time for the Tar Heels, but now the ball, and that play is on if it's hit right. You could see Ali Sentner, number 21, Lori, running toward the goal, and there were not enough Blue Devils there to mark everyone in Carolina Blue. Well, this is where Duke needs to be careful defensively. If there's no pressure on the ball, they have to drop their lines, stay compact between them, deny the space in behind because Sintnor was just sitting on the back shoulder looking for that ball over the top and a little bit of a better place ball would have been in on goal. 1v1 versus Ruthie Jones. That was a great look right there. You could see the way North Carolina just merges in on you with numbers trying to force that ball where they have the numbers in support defensively results in the turnover. Julia Dorsey, as you mentioned, back on the field for North Carolina. Boy, did they need her. As the injuries have hit the hardest on that back line for North Carolina all season, starting with their All-American in the back and Macy Bell, and then Dorsey, the two sports star for North Carolina, also national champion with the lacrosse team. She was out the last four. So much needed boost, but how long will she be able to go? That'll certainly be a question as this match plays out tonight. Patterson had an opening, takes her shot, and Ruthie Jones handles it cleanly. Well, this play will be on all night for North Carolina. If they can move the ball quickly from side to side, the weak side is on. You see Duke shifting. They have the tendency to squeeze the game on one side, but if you could shift the ball quickly for North Carolina, you'll find a player like Patterson wide open. Decent shot on goal. Ruthie Jones handles it well in the end, but one of the reasons why Avery Patterson has been so successful in the attack, just her ability to find space, cut inside off that left side. Nine goals for Patterson this season, a career high in her junior year. Raider, quick turn with the left foot. Maggie Graham met by a couple of Tar Heel defenders. Well, coming up next, it is our second semifinal between Florida State and Notre Dame. Tomorrow, we've got the Field Hockey Championship for you at 2 Eastern. That's all right here on ACCN and the ESPN app, the home of ACC championships. North Carolina, Virginia facing off for the second consecutive season in that Field Hockey Final. Patterson. And it's better from Duke, but Sophie Jones has to be able to face up and go forward in those moments. Just understand that they've broken the first line of pressure for North Carolina. And for a team that likes to squeeze the game and press, got to find those, take those moments when they can break out. Sentner had to wait a little longer than anticipated Allie Sentner to get on the field. ACL injury last year. She has really started to come into form. All ACC first team selection for North Carolina this year, number 21. Is the ACC Co-Offensive Player of the Week coming into this ACC Championship. Hanson asking if Cox is willing to run. She is. Migley, though, stayed calm, stayed with her, but gives up the corner. And Cox is doing a good job on that far side of understanding when to cut inside, but also when to stay wide. But the space in behind is on. She sees it, is a willing runner to get in behind and forces Migley to send that one over the inline again for another corner kick for North Carolina, their third of this game so far. And, and we've said it before, Jen, this is an area where North Carolina can be dominant, especially with Patterson, Hanson on the end. 
Need a better ball than that, though. That's too easy for Ruthie Jones, and she is ready to send the Blue Devils on the break. Nobody, though, at the moment with Mackenzie Pluck. So she wisely holds it up and then is foul. Well, Sintenor has done such a good job up top just with her, her movement to be able to open up players coming out of the midfield throughout this first 15, 20 minutes of this game. No need to foul there. Migley, it's time to serve. She does, gets it through. Cooper makes her way into the goal. Ball didn't quite get there. Emmy Allen, alert. Migley, one move, gets her free. Here is Meza, another all-ACC first-teamer this year for the Tar Heels. Third time in her career in her junior year, she's received all-ACC recognition. First time on the first team. Fox had a defender on her back when she received that ball. Now we'll see what Duke can do with it. Pluck, Cooper, a little too far away from her outstretched foot. Blue Devils take it back. It is Emily Royson who plays it back to Ruthie Jones, the two Royson sisters playing beside one another. This is Jenna, transferred to Duke this year from Georgetown. Three. All Big East career there with the Hoyas. Cooper. Has been so good setting up her teammates as well. You mentioned double digits, Lori, in both goals and assists this season for Cooper. Delaney Graham, easy to spot in those bright pink cleats, puts it all the way across, and then Emmy Allen just needs to call her own defenders off out of the way, has it handled. Well, both teams in the first 20 minutes look confident when they're on the ball, when they are attacking, moving the ball, keeping possession at times. It's just about being more decisive with that final pass, the final delivery from the wide areas. To look to challenge both of these goalkeepers. Just easy snags in the end for them to be able to come out, make the play. Our semifinals getting started tonight with Duke and North Carolina. Florida State co-champions with North Carolina in the regular season. Seminoles are the defending ACC champs. They'll take on Notre Dame. It's had one of their best seasons since joining the conference in our second semifinal. Everybody playing to get to that ACC championship game on Sunday. That one is at noon Eastern on ESPNU. Pluck pushed to the corner. Dangerous play. Blue Devils still trying to get the right ball in on the attack. Well, it's Groff that's the one that's called for this, this foul, Jen. And this is what she's in that defensive midfield role for, just to, to make sure she's screening the back line, deny any service, comes in tough. Felt like a bit of a 50-50 challenge to me, both of those players going in. But it is Groff that gets called for the foul. She's really the one that allows for Sophie Jones to get more into the mix, to be able to start to dictate the tempo a bit more, find the rhythm of the game, and drive forward at times. Tar Heels 
Uh, two shots, one shot on goal so far. None officially for the Blue Devils, but they've looked dangerous on some of their crosses into the box. Especially from the far side, Migley whipped in some balls. Now it'll be about getting more bodies in to the 18-yard box for Duke or rerouting their runs so it's not so easily defended for North Carolina. But a really confident start, and I feel like Robbie Church, head coach of the Duke Blue Devils, would be really thrilled with the way this game has started. They've had possession at times. They've been able to press, made life easy for themselves defensively. And we mentioned coming into this game, getting Michelle Cooper on the ball early and often, and she's been an important part of the buildup to be able to get more numbers into the attack, something that we haven't seen as of late for this Duke side. Maggie Graham. Gets it to Cooper, the ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Raider not near enough to her right hip to pick up the ball. The game in the regular season, which was eventually won 3-0 by North Carolina, that was played in Durham, was scoreless until the 35th minute. And that was when a corner kick opened things up for the Tar Heels. Tori Hansen doing the honors. Meza. Libby Moore, the senior out of Wilmington, getting the start tonight with she and Maggie Pierce playing that lone holding midfield role for the Tar Heels. Now Patterson gets herself a look. Is, is Duke okay with that, do you think, Lori, from that distance? Because there's been a couple of times now Patterson has earned that for herself to get a look on goal. Yeah, she certainly has, but that's something that the Duke Blue Devils would have scouted, knowing that she likes to cut inside at times, find the space, does it so well. We'll start wide and then drive inside, whether it's off a through ball or getting it at her feet, as we've just seen the last few attacks for North Carolina. But yes, ultimately, to have a shot from 20 yards out on Ruthie Jones will take it all day. There's another one! That one a bit more dangerous, though. They don't want to take that all day. <laughs> Listen, we always talk about <laughs> the commentator's curse, and of course, here it is. And this time, it's a little bit further out. It's just working some magic, and then find some little gaps. And this is something that the Duke Blue Devils will not be okay with, though. Just a clear shot. No one steps up tight enough, and that doesn't miss by much, and there's a lot of power behind that one. Sintner's been active in this game, whether it's making the little runs to open up space for others or getting on the end of it for herself as she drops a little bit deeper. Yeah, nobody from Duke wants to see that coming at them again. I mean, Sintner has been playing so well, as I mentioned, two goals, five assists on the season. After missing all of last year, had a tremendous career in high school and in her youth soccer was an All-American Player of the Year by United Soccer Coaches Association, and really was expected to be the big game changer for the Tar Heels offensively last year. They didn't have that. Now we're starting to see it. Three changes, by the way, have been made for North Carolina. You just saw Julia Dorsey go off. So as expected, not gonna get a full 90 out of her coming back from injury. Emerson Elgin, redshirt freshman, comes on in her place. The other two substitutions, Maddie Dahlin, number five, watch out for her speed on top for North Carolina. She replaced Cox, and then Maggie Pierce, as I mentioned, replacing Moore in that holding midfield role. And will this potentially be a difference maker, Lori? You alluded to it earlier, the great depth that North Carolina has. I mean, Anson Dorans early in this season was quoted as saying this is his deepest team. The only area he wasn't deep was where they got hit the hardest, was at center back. So even more kudos to them for sustaining those injuries and getting to the position that they are in right now. But they do bring a lot in the attack and fresh legs, which plays right into the way that they want to play. Some really key players on that injured list on the back line for the Tar Heels this season. None bigger than Macy Bell, who went down right at the beginning of the season. Well, you, you said it best, Jen. I mean, just a lot of credit to this, this entire North Carolina team because they are known for their attack. They're known for bringing players on, pressing, wearing teams down. But it really has been that back line where they've had to have a ton of rotations due to injury 
They've locked things down. Anson Doran said that is what got them here. They didn't have the, the potent attackers with the double digits as we're seeing with Cat Raider and Michelle Cooper up top for, for Duke Blue Devils. So they had to find ways to keep themselves in games. And a lot of credit to Tori Hansen in the back. We talked about her ability going forward, but also just leading that line locally and just with her experience. First change for the Blue Devils coming on is Grace Watkins, number nine. She replaced Mackenzie Pluck. And looked like Cooper might have been thinking about rolling it right over there to Watkins, but Meza there defensively for the Tar Heels. And we'll keep an eye on this matchup with Michelle Cooper dropping a little bit deeper. We're seeing Pierce come into this game for Libby Moore. Her positioning is going to be key just to make sure that she's aware of where Michelle Cooper is at all times. Because it's at central areas that allows for North Carolina to be able to get players, especially like Adela Rose on that back line on the left side, to be able to get into more advanced positions, just knowing that there's cover defensively behind. And really deny Michelle Cooper those passing lanes and her ability to even receive the ball in the attack. Ball stepped in and won by Della Rose. <laughs> Hanson got the ball wide. And that's where it stops at the moment. Now throw in coming for the Tar Heels. It almost feels like, Lori, the first option that each team is looking for has not been there. And wherever North Carolina is trying to go, Duke's there to block the pass. Duke has not been able to find Raider or Cooper consistently. So can they adjust, find whatever plan B might be to perhaps eventually get back to whatever plan A is? Well, and that is patience on in the attack for both of these teams because immediately once the ball is turned over, both teams doing a good job of getting numbers behind the opposition, denying the space to be able to go vertical. Left footed ball in the box. Brought down. And Ruthie Jones calling everybody off. And Jim, we've seen how both of these teams can be incredibly effective in those transitional moments. Both sides are taking that away defensively. So then what do you have next? That's when you have to get players like Meza. So much of what North Carolina wants to do goes through her, her ability to be able to set play Ball in the box, Cooper. <laughs> My goodness, just turns a pass that looks like it's just played in behind to alleviate pressure, really just forces North Carolina defensively to face their own goal and gives up a, a set piece at the other end in a matter of what seconds. It'll be Grace Watkins, junior out of Manhattan Beach, California. Second corner for the Blue Devils. And the Tar Heels. And Darlene with three Blue Devils around her, trying to make everybody chase. This freshman has been really good for North Carolina this season. Well, Dunley's not afraid to just drive at the back line, but a lot of credit for the, the Duke Blue Devils just getting two players on Dalene, slowing it down, then ultimately winning the ball and, and sending it out of danger, allowing for things to slow down, getting numbers behind the ball. But Dalene just willing to be able to take on herself, draw attention. And you can probably hear the public address announcer informing everyone of the multitude of changes that just happened. If you watch North Carolina soccer, you know this is part of what they do. A lot of changes coming on for North Carolina for this last 13 minutes and change. Also saw Nikki Chico come in to replace Raider for the Blue Devils. 
This is one of the players who just came on for North Carolina. Emily Murphy, number 35. Also have Talia Della Peruta out there, number 24. Also stepping onto the pitch for the Blue Devils. Number 17. Bella Katie Sember, Shaw. another one of the changes. Are there some game changers to be had for the Tar Heels off the bench? Adalian well, has slipped a couple of times since coming in the match. Looked for a moment there like Watkins thought about going quickly for Duke, but saw nothing at all was on. Well, and all the credit to North Carolina because they're doing such a good job of cutting off the passing angles, denying Michelle Cooper that initial ball. Because Duke is doing a good job of breaking that first line, but then when they look to go forward quickly, there's a number of Tar Heels in front, just denying the opportunity, forcing Duke to have to go backwards, making the play predictable for themselves. I feel like, though, Lori, this is a little more of a conservative defensive lineup for the Blue Devils with Raider coming off, that, that partner that has been so great for Cooper this season, not on at the moment, and it is really looking a lot more like Michelle Cooper out there all alone as an outlet. And this is something that we've seen from from Duke throughout this, this season. There's been times when she has been isolated, and, and what does her movement look like, or what does the movement off of her look like? When they are going forward, you have to rely on a player like Maggie Graham to get near her, to be able to be that first line, to at least draw attention. But then at times, can Michelle Cooper, instead of staying central, they know North Carolina knows that's where she's going to be. Can she just drift a little bit wider, see if that draws North Carolina out of their, of their tight back four, and then opens up space centrally for like a Maggie Graham to be able to get in to those pockets of space. Another one of the changes did not mention for North Carolina. You see right there, number 10, Rachel Jones. Great to see her healthy and out on the field as an option for North Carolina. Missed first 10 games of this season dealing with injury. Jamaican International. Moxley played a lot at that right back position as needed for North Carolina this season, but she can get up a little higher. It's more natural for her, number eight for North Carolina. Here is Cooper deep into her own territory to retrieve the ball. Dolly, nice move on the far side. Della Pruta. And a corner, another one coming for the Tar Heels. This is number four of the first half. Corner kick, Tar Heels. Paige Tolentino, another one of those changes who will come off and come into the back line for North Carolina. Good left foot for Tolentino. Junior out of Pinehurst, North Carolina, ready from the corner flag. Hansen searching for it, got there, but so too did Jones. And it's a good ball in from North Carolina. Tolentino just whips this one in, and you see a little bit of the starting run, but you see the amount of bodies around Hansen. Well done from the Duke Blue Devils, just in the eye here. They're not going with the double team, but just making sure that they have players in the zonal area to win it first, make it predictable for themselves, and then Ruthie Jones off her line grabs that one. And in some ways, you feel like this is a bit of a conservative approach for both sides. We're seeing North Carolina get numbers behind, denying Michelle Cooper that early ball. Chico, nobody stepping up to stop. Eventually, she just takes a shot herself. Can't hardly blame her. And that's the initiative, though, that's going to have to be from the other Duke players. Uh, Good run from Michelle Cooper to go wide to open up the gaps of space. Oh, 
comes the first shot of the match for the Blue Devils. They were outshot 15 to two in the regular season meeting between these two teams. No play to be had on that ball for Cooper. Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, the ACC Huddle Crew will be just down the road, Raleigh, North Carolina. They'll get you set for another full day of football. They'll also have halftime shows, pre- and post-game shows throughout the day. At 6.30, you'll get a complete wrap-up of the afternoon's games, and they'll get you set for the primetime matchup between Wake Forest and NC State on ACCN at 8. That is all right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. It's like L. Piper and Devin Lynch both just coming on for the Blue Devils. Devin Lynch, you can see right there, number six. She's been a good spark off the bench for Duke. Actually got the start in the quarterfinal against Virginia on Sunday. Had an assist in each of the last two regular season games. Darlene's been a handful since she's come into this match, but she has been handled well thus far by the Blue Devil defense. And that goes back to my point a, a second ago before it looked like Michelle Cooper was going to break out on that quick counterattack is both of these sides, you kind of feel like there's a, a bit of a conservative approach. We see North Carolina doing a really good job of denying the time and space for Michelle Cooper, an easy outlet into her. Defensively, they've got numbers and cover. And then the same with Duke, just denying that space in behind where North Carolina could be threatening. Both teams have the opportunity, though, to be able to be a bit more patient in the attack, start to move it around a bit quicker, look for better opportunities. Majority of this game, though, has been played in the central half or the central corridors. Not able to really break free or have clear opportunities on goal throughout this first 45. December bumped off the ball by the Blue Devils. Cooper commits the foul. And you saw the numbers for North Carolina around Michelle Cooper. That means there's other players open. And on the far side, there is opportunities to be able to break out quickly if it's recognized from Duke early on. Because the main concern for North Carolina right now is Cooper not allowing her to get faced up, driving at the back line, or even be able to, to dictate tempo get other players involved in the game, just deny her the ability to even receive the ball. Has to be better recognition though from Duke in those central areas to be able to find those wide spaces quicker. Duke Blue Devils have never won an ACC championship. They're looking for their first. North Carolina, of course, a storied history. They've won it 22 times. Last coming in 2019. In fact, the last five times they've been in the ACC championship in this tournament, they've made it to the final, winning it twice in that stretch. Only time they've missed in their history was last year. Good composure there by Emily Royson. But now Duke potentially vulnerable. Jones that overlapping run by Sember was covered by Duke. Pierce lines it up right through the middle. Doesn't get far. Cooper immediately two players around her. Watkins has Delaney Graham crossing in front of her. Graham in a more advanced position now with some of the substitutions that have been made. Maggie Graham looks for her sister. A couple of sets of sisters on this Duke Blue Devil team. North Carolina with one as well. 
De La Peruta sisters. And it's a good spell of possession for the Duke Blue Devils, just to move it side to side, looking to see if they can find that moment to be able to play in between the lines. Cooper got some space. A little too far out to be too dangerous unless she strikes that just right. Well, when they're in possession, they're starting to move the ball with more confidence, the Duke is, but then they're in good positions defensively to create the turnovers, to allow for Michelle Cooper to be able to get on the end of this one. Always gonna be tough from that distance against Allen, but better spell of possession, better play from Duke. These last few minutes of this first half. Cooper down on the ground, North Carolina with the ball. Darlene. Trying to just give herself an opening. She got one. But Ruthie Jones, once again there for Duke. Cut off anything too dangerous. Tough ball, but Chico does well to corral it, keep it in play. Delaney Graham got away from her. Lest you thought we were done with substitutions in this first half, North Carolina has a couple more. Good to see Tori Della Peruta back out there, number nine, along with you see Ali Gambone, one of the captains on this North Carolina team. Tori Della Peruta been out the last seven matches, was away with the Italian U19 team, and then also was dealing with an injury. And she was really off to a fantastic start prior to her injury this season. Are you a little surprised to see? Well, hold on now. I was going to say that we're scoreless. We are still. This will be a foul about midfield. And a card, it looks like, maybe coming out. Hold on. Ashley Cedro trying to get everybody under control. She is given a straight red. Maggie Graham is the player who was booked. I don't believe it would have been a last defender back type of situation. It may have been something after Lori that she did that the referee was absolutely having none of. That is what we're hearing, that it may have been the reaction from Maggie Graham. And oh my goodness. Well, that is a huge game changer at this point in time leading into the halftime to go down a player but it did look like there was some sort of reaction in the middle of the field. Well, what we're being told, and maybe you saw it live, was, well, the double bird, to just make it concise. Two middle fingers, one red card gets Maggie Graham out of this match, and there was a yellow card after that as well on Talia Della Peruta for North Carolina. So for the rest of this match, Duke will be playing down a player. Right now, they've got to deal with the free kick. They do. But my, how this might change things. And it's just really unfortunate from a player like Maggie Graham and how important she is yeah. in the yeah. midfield. Nine. Have to change their tactics completely Seven. going into the second Eight. half of your Duke. And after all the work that they've done Four. defensively, but in Two. possession as well. One. One to play with confidence in this game puts them in a, a precarious position going to the second 45. It, it feels harsh. It feels harsh to give that for a reaction, I think, a red card, but nonetheless, that's the situation. So Duke will be playing with 10 for the rest of the match. We are scoreless after our first half.
And I do think it was interesting. You, you heard Robbie say there, he said it's a red card, no doubt. I mean, we had some discussion about that, thinking maybe perhaps it would just be a yellow in that type of a situation. But in the eyes of our referee, it was a red card. And so Maggie Graham now out of the match for Duke. We'll see how they shuffle things around. Your thoughts, do you think that they are going to be a little more conservative? They're going to drop back a little bit more? Well, originally, with you and I talking, we felt like the, the initial foul was a yellow card, just disrupting play, tracking back. There was coverage, so it wasn't denying an obviously obvious goal-scoring opportunity, because you can see the numbers back for, for Duke as well. But then we're also hearing from Christina Uncle messaging with her it would be a, a straight red card. It is considered abusive language. And as you, as you mentioned, Robbie Church also saying that that would be a straight red card as well. So more so it's about going into this second half and, and how does Duke line up now? How do they make adjustments tactically to get a result in this game? And, and this is a team that has been good on the counterattack. So they're gonna feel comfortable in those positions if they do decide to get, team to, to get compact defensively and allow Michelle Cooper to have opportunities in those transitional moments. Second half underway, Duke playing with 10, but no advantage on the scoreboard. Shots five to two in favor of the Tar Heels in the first half. Michelle Cooper held largely in check, the ACC Offensive Player of the Year, running toward the ball now. Instead, it is North Carolina trying to turn it the other way. A lot of changes off the bench in that first half for North Carolina. Looked to be back to their starting 11 as we begin the second half. So, Lori, though, I'll go back to it. Does North Carolina look to attack even more now? And does Duke sit back more down a player? Yeah, if you're North Carolina, I think you, you start to take risks. You start to go after. This is what they want to do. They want to put teams under pressure. They have the depth on the bench that we've seen throughout the entirety of this program, essentially, not just this season. And they can have the ability to get players forward, especially like Adela Rose on that left-hand side. And most likely, we're going to see Duke stay compact defensively, keep Michelle Cooper high, look to hit on the transition, on quick transition. So they have the luxury in North Carolina to be able to push more numbers forward and find those gaps, especially out wide, because I imagine that Duke is going to sit more centrally as well. And really a shame in the sense that you feel like Duke came out to play. They came out more attacking minded than we've seen them lately. Now they're going to have to contend with a corner kick here. North Carolina had four of these in the first half and got a couple of really good looks from them as well. Tessa Delarose, the freshman, will take it with her left. Duke won the first ball. Second bounces down to the Tar Heels. It was Julia Dorsey chasing after it. Cooper. You may have heard Anson Dorrance allude to it. There was a moment almost right off kickoff that Michelle Cooper found space. It was scarce after that. Here is Sam Meza. She'll take the shot as she slides down. And one player to keep an eye on for North Carolina throughout this game has been Sentinel. Whether she's playing up top or dropping a little bit deeper into midfield, her work ethic to be able to track back, to make some plays defensively, has been excellent throughout this match so far. But then also just to get into the attack and just the unselfish running to be able to open up space, whether she gets the ball to her feet, as we're seeing right now, just to help set play, but also just to open up space for her teammates then be able to exploit in between the lines. She's going to be key in the second 45 with her movement, her energy, especially with, with a Duke team that's going to try to stay tight between the lines, deny the space for North Carolina to be able to get into most likely force them wide to look for service from the, the wider areas. So 
Ruthie Jones, all ACC second team goalkeeper, will put it back into play. Emily Moxley. Meza and Migley arm in arm. You know, you heard Robbie Church say there too, and there was a yellow card issued on that play that saw Maggie Graham receive the red. Talia Della Peruta also received a yellow for North Carolina, and there may be a lot more going on that we have not necessarily seen. This is a rivalry after all. This is Duke, North Carolina. Sometimes it is difficult to keep those emotions in check. Well, it's postseason play as well. These players know that something's on the line. They're competitors. They want to compete for every ball. And so emotions, the intensity are high in these games. Duke has never beaten North Carolina at the ACC tournament. Uh, Tar Heels, meanwhile, accustomed to advancing to the final when they find themselves in this position in the semifinal. The last five times that they've been in the tournament, they've done just that. Missed it last year for the first time ever. But North Carolina with a record of 28 and 4 all time in the semifinal round of this tournament. And we mentioned the onus being a bit more on North Carolina now playing with a player up in this game, being patient in the attack, finding those moments when they can be even more decisive with the final pass to get a clearer look on frame. But for Duke, it's going to be about just locking things down, staying patient defensively, risk versus reward, not giving up too much in behind, keeping themselves in this game and then looking for those special moments to find Michelle Cooper because she has been lethal when Duke does set up these way in this particular way in terms of being able to look to exploit in behind quickly with the pace of Michelle Cooper to be able to get in behind. Cooper is fouled on that play. And interesting that Mackenzie Pluck does start the second half. I've seen Duke do this a couple of times as well. Kat Rader will start on the bench, the freshman who's been the other part of the dynamic duo with Michelle Cooper in terms of the scoring. Those two have combined a number of times this season and has been one of those who have scored the last eight goals for the Blue Devils. <laughs> Libby Moore. North Carolina wanting to press the advantage they have with an extra player on the field and Gonna have to figure out how to get through maybe a lower defensive minded Duke team to do so. And it will be interesting, Lori, you've said this, that risk versus reward. Robbie Church told us when we talked to him this week, we are gonna roll the dice a little bit more. That was a plan when he thought he'd have 11 on the field. So maybe now you don't roll quite so often, but they will roll it at some point. Michelle Cooper held without a shot. The only time in her career in the regular season meeting against the Tar Heels. They know that can't happen again. Got to find a time to get her a look. Yeah, and it is about just being disciplined defensively, frustrating North Carolina as much as possible, forcing them to have to overplay at times, and then finding that good the ball in and a good ball in to Michelle Cooper for her to be able to make the play. Ball does stay in right at the end line. Now in the box, a chance for a shot. There it is, and just wide. Well, once again, it's Sintnor looking to find the back of the net. She's been so active throughout this game. And I mentioned her being a key in the second 45. Just holds a run, receives the ball to her feet, and then just looks to feather that one into the far corner. Doesn't miss by much. And she has been so active. And for a player and the patience that this North Carolina team is going to have to look for, her movement will be key to keep the ball moving quickly. Del Rose bouncing ball. One by Pluck and the Blue Devils. Pluck has Cooper. But everybody in Carolina Blue 
trying to get back, put themselves in between the ball and the ACC Offensive Player of the Year. They do so, they get the ball back. Meza has such great vision and ability to find those seams. Diana Doris will tell you her best qualities are defensive, but when she can <laughs> connect with that front line, it is something to see. Yeah, and I like her, the role that they give her here at North Carolina, just her ability to go find the game. We see her float out wide a lot. She is a central player, but she will find space, pop out wide, buy herself a bit more time on on the ball, but then also it draws out the opposition in terms of their positioning, frees up other players, doesn't get enough credit for getting more players involved in the game. Meza, such a key aspect to the way that they want to play North Carolina. And it looks like North Carolina is saying, we are going to keep charging for that end line, whether we get a cross or a corner, we're going to get the ball from the wide area into this Duke box. Here we go, seventh corner for the Tar Heels. Hansen marked by Cooper. They'll try it from the other side. And it's a smart play and a smart game plan from North Carolina to drive the Duke Blue Devils back, face their own goal, have to deal with the service. But it does require North Carolina to continue to recycle the ball, move it from side to side, and they have to do it quickly to be able to to draw out the Duke Blue Devil defense and find those spaces to be able to deliver dangerous balls in. It's Emily Moxley now, transfer from UNCW on this far side with the service. North Carolina wanting to say that it was touched there by Duke, not the call. So goal kick is finally the Blue Devils get an opportunity to get out of the corner kick onslaught. And a couple of subs come on for North Carolina. You will see that bench a lot more active in and out as you're allowed to do that in the second half. You're allowed one re-entry in college soccer. So Natty Darlene back in for Cox and Maggie Pierce in for Moore. It's up top and in the midfield for the Tar Heels. In North Carolina, though, I'm saying give number 21 some more looks. She has had some of the most dangerous looking shots so far, Sentner, for North Carolina. Here's their leading scorer, Avery Patterson. Looks out wide. Della Rose says, give me another corner. And it doesn't look like much for North Carolina, but that's a good look to play out wide. Look to see if they can deliver the service. And, and then it's Duke facing their own goal, giving up another set piece. Moxley has a couple of assists off corner kicks this year, including one to Hansen in Durham. She is from Cary, North Carolina, back in her hometown. Header. No follow up to be had. Not yet, anyway. Meza. Cooper steps in front to win it. Just booms it down the field. Give her team a break for maybe a second or two to catch their breath. Julia Dorsey back on the field. Limited in minutes after being out the last four with injury. Sending it forward for Sentner as Nikki Chico starting the second half for Duke. Able to give some defensive cover. And this is a good test for North Carolina to continue to find ways to break down this low block for Duke. Going to sit compact as we've seen throughout this first 10 minutes or so. And can they find those spaces? Can they stay patient? Move it quickly, though, with intensity, but find those players like Sentinel or, or Meza to be able to, to play make and then initially start to have a little cutback ball that will challenge Duke defensively. Delaney Graham trying to defend. Oh, 
Good crowd on hand here at Wake Med Soccer Park. Everybody just settling in. To see what this second half will unfold for all of us. I remember in a change this year in the regular season, there was no overtime in college soccer. That, of course, would be on the docket if we remain tied in this one after 90 with penalty kicks to follow. Setting the stage for the NCAA postseason. And the College Cup, which will be played right here at Wake Med Soccer Park first weekend in December. Ball is a good one across. Meza. Just feels like Duke is trying to hold on for dear life back there, defend everything that North Carolina is throwing at them. I mean, the Tar Heels already with five corner kicks in this second half in the first 15 minutes. Well, they know it's not pretty to have to sit back, but frustrate North Carolina as much as they can, keep themselves in this game. Pierce. Center. Cross. Still alive. And North Carolina will set up for another. Well, these are the moments that North Carolina is going to have to continue to look for. It's Sintonor again at the heart of it. They go out one side, and then it's just a quick little pass to be able to bypass the first line from Dukes defensively, able to send a dangerous ball across. Ends up being a Duke Blue Devils goal kick, but that's better from North Carolina. Switch the point of play, find those little seams to exploit. And then it's most likely going to have to be a cutback ball, especially with the amount of numbers that Duke's employing defensively. Another shot taken as Obviously, you saw that was a goal kick and not a corner kick. But North Carolina still creating off of it anyway. Cooper, you just get the feeling it is going to require a moment of brilliance an execution from a Michelle Cooper, from a Cat Raider, for Duke to have anything in the offensive end. Whole game plan had to completely shift now that they're down a player. Maggie Graham going out about 30 seconds left in the first half, receiving a red card. And I'll be curious to see the movement of Michelle Cooper throughout the, this this second half and we're seeing her, her stay a little bit higher and just the last attempt does check back and that's going to have to be read quicker from her teammates instead of looking in behind because if they can start to to play around with the two center backs from North Carolina does Michelle Cooper drop a little bit deeper see what that does with the two center backs do they go with her do they stay can she get turned and faced and allow for more players to join in but just one big ball over the top we know what Michelle Cooper is capable of doing, but it's just too predictable right now if it's not to Cooper's feet. Sentner, Dolly got around the corner. Moxley, good ball in the box. Jones out for it. And Ruthie Jones well off her line, reads this one early. No pressure on the ball. It's a diagonal ball that can be dangerous. Still a few of these for North Carolina in the first half. Ruthie Jones just off her line quickly. Exactly what she needs to do, just filling in the gaps behind the back line for Duke. And it almost looks like a five back for Duke at the moment with three more right on top of him. Really, it's everybody but Michelle Cooper defending for Duke at the moment. Well, that's exactly what it is. They fight back with three in front and then Michelle Cooper up top. And, you know, at times it might, if they can get out of their own half, be a bit of a hybrid three back or four back. But this is a team that's going to lock it down, frustrate North Carolina, force them to have to play. 
rotate it around, find those little angles and little combination play. And, and so far, credit to Duke. Haven't given up many good looks. In fact, the best opportunities have really come from these long range shots that haven't tested Ruthie Jones at all. Yeah, they'll take those, as you mentioned, in the first half all night long. And they're having to do a lot more defending. This is the play that really has changed the tenor of this match. We'll go back and show you a little creative editing on our part here to show you what happened with the red card. Well, it's Maggie Grant that's caught. That is a, a legit yellow card right there in terms of the foul. And then she gives a, a double bird, which is considered abusive language, so it is a straight red card. That changes the entire course of this game, though. It's a minute or so left in the first half. They're down to 10 players, the Duke Blue Devils, and, and now we're seeing them in such a defensive posture, difficult for them to even get out of their own half with Michelle Cooper, the lone striker up top. Here is Cooper rolling out. A rare 4A into the attacking third for the Blue Devils, really the first of the second half. Oh, it's a, it's a quite remarkable the amount of attention that Michelle Cooper draws just on that one play. We get six players back from North Carolina just making sure that they have cover. And credit to them, because this is when they are susceptible is those quick breaks, especially when you've had the majority of the possession in this second half. Last thing you really want to do is track back, get numbers behind. And North Carolina is still committed to the task at hand to regain possession, deny Michelle Cooper those opportunities. Meanwhile, a half dozen subs for North Carolina have come into the match as well. Hard for the course for the Tar Heels. Sanson Dorrance believes in playing good players, and he feels he has a lot of them. That was Talia Della Peruta. Just had a touch in the middle, number 24. Ali Gambone back in on the outside, number 16. Can the Tar Heels find a way through this Blue Devil defense? December. I'll take a shot, and you've got to think, if you're Anson Dorrance on the bench, you're saying you have to do better. You've got to do better than shots from 20, 25 yards out that don't even force the goalkeeper into a save. Well, this is where it tests their patience, and you have to find more penetrating passes. Going side to side, Duke will be fine with that all day. That gives them actually the rest on defense that they'll be looking for. But it's those little penetrative passes centrally to open up the space, even if it's in and then back out to go out wide again and create the numbers overloads in those wide areas, then to serve balls in with more time and space is what North Carolina is going to have to be looking for. Michelle Cooper has gone to the bench for Duke. Kat Raider has taken her place as the lone striker on the island in the attack. Better ball. Moxley, ball flicked toward the goal, no problem. It's Tori Della Peruta flicking it forward, both Tori and Talia out of coming Georgia on the field together. Haven't had as many opportunities they would have liked with that, with both of them dealing with injuries various times this season, as well as being away with national teams. Tolentino, Moxley. Well, the shots are going to certainly favor North Carolina, especially in this second half. The quality of the shots, however, not very favorable. And I think if you're looking at Robbie Church right now and having to make these adjustments after going down a player, you're pretty, outside of not being able to create much in, or anything at all in the attack, you're happy with the way this is going. You frustrated North Carolina, you're forcing the outside shots, nothing's really getting through the central areas of your team, you're forcing it to go wide, and then you're defending well, 
inside your own 18 yard box and, and that's all you can ask for you for your team right now and this feels a bit like that virginia game this past sunday virginia having the majority of the possession duke defensively frustrating them forcing them to have to find ways to, to break them down and then hitting on that counter attack and they took advantage of those moments Cat Raider. She has been absolutely on fire down the stretch. Raider, 11 goals on the season. The lead all ACC freshmen, eight goals in her last 10. Will we see a moment in the second half with Raider and Cooper out there together? They were key when Raider came on in the last regular season match on the road at Notre Dame and allowing the Blue Devils to finish that one with a 2-2 draw. Gambone to Sember. Del Cruta. Cox has come back into the match. He's on it now. Migley had seen enough. But this one will be another corner for the Tar Heels. They're six of this second half, 10 of the match. And at this point in time, it's a, the finest little details that are gonna separate these two teams. And for North Carolina, it's about the delivery, giving Hansen a chance to make a, make a play on the ball and the delivery. Well, Cooper had been marking Hansen. She's not out there at the moment for Duke. Hansen got her head to it, and it is saved off the line. Actually, I think that was Gambone who headed the ball for North Carolina. Yeah, did bypass Hansen in the box, and it found his way to Gambone, who does so well, just gets down low, keeps it on frame, and exactly what you want your post player to do, just stand up, goes off the chest of Delaney Graham, it looks like. In such an important role, that post player, and then Ruthie Jones makes the grab as the ball's put back in. Full team defensive effort there on the corner kick to keep the Tar Heels out of the back of the net. Sember stepped over a couple of times. More. So difficult to find a way through all that traffic. <laughs> Tar Heels really being tested here. Can be a little mental, you would think, for them too, feeling like, hey, we should have an advantage. But they haven't shown anything for it yet, at least not in the back of the net. They've gotten shots, certainly have had all the possession. You know, one thing that we haven't seen from North Carolina, we talk about finding those little penetrating passes, is just delivering balls in from a bit deeper areas. This looks like we'll see another card on the play as one of the few moments Duke had to break out. L. Piper was fouled on the play, and then Talia Della Peruta, that is actually her second yellow, so she's now out of the match. You gotta be smarter than that. And it's such an unnecessary play. They have so many players back, North Carolina, committed to get players behind the, the ball easily, and it's Piper that's off on her own. And then Della Peruta, who got the yellow card on the one where Maggie Graham was sent off just in the waning few minutes of the first half, receives her second yellow. Now we're numbers even with 10 for both sides. <laughs> what, a, what a strange game. <laughs> <It is, laughs> wow. Well, we all will have a moment here as Katie Groff is down and requiring some attention for Duke. All right, Lori, I would think Duke to this point feels like they have won the second half because 
North Carolina's taken a ton of shots, not many great shots. They've held their ground. They've conceded corners, but they haven't conceded a goal. And now, in one of the two times they have the ball in their attacking third of the field, North Carolina commits a foul, and we go to 10 each. And this actually feels like a, a vital time for both teams to calm down, understand your game plan. For Duke, how do they change their mindsets? They came into this second 45 knowing that they were going to have to defend, look for some transitional moments. They haven't had any in this game except for this last breakout play where they, they draw the second yellow on Del Peruta. But now, can they get themselves back into that attacking mode, get their game plan right where they still bunker down, make sure that they have their their defense settled in, but then also look for Raider or Cooper up top. And then for North Carolina, down to 10, how do you make the adjustments? Can you continue to fight to find that space in behind? Now as this game most likely will start to open up and there'll be a lot more space in those central areas. Come on, somebody's got to go for <laughs> it here. Somebody's got to go for it. You don't want to play 17 more minutes of just trying to hang on because then you've got overtime. I mean, maybe you do, I don't know. And then you potentially have penalties. Well, this feels like both of these teams, they want to attack, they want to get after it. And, and right before this, a foul occurred. The thing that I was going to say that we haven't really seen from North Carolina is the delivery from the deeper areas. If Duke's not going to step out and get pressure on them, deliver those balls, force them to have to defend those aerial balls in their own box. and. Even with the numbers even now, that is something that North Carolina can look for. See if they can get players like Patterson making those diagonal runs, getting on the end of them. Devin Lynch, freshman out of Naperville, Illinois, will take the free kick. A little too far over the head of her teammates and Emmy Allen making sure she's not asleep back there, has her first touch of the second half. New ball game now, each team down to 10. Duke went down a player, Maggie Graham showing a red card just before halftime, and then Talia Della Pruta picking up her second yellow just a few moments ago for North Carolina. Gambone had the best look for the Tar Heels. Off a corner kick, required saves from two different Blue Devil defenders to keep it out of the goal. <laughs> Bella Sembert back to Moxley. Gambone trying to get there before it goes out of bounds. Can't quite. <laughs> Want to give you Saturday's Week 10 college football lineup on ACCN and the ESPN app. Drake May, number 17, North Carolina, taking on Virginia at noon Eastern. Then 23 ranked Syracuse is in Pittsburgh to take on the Panthers and we cap the day with our ACCN primetime matchup. Number 21, Wake Forest going up against number 22, NC State. Line change for the Tar Heels. A lot of players coming back onto the field. Perhaps one extra as looks like little confusion for Cox as to whether she has to stay on or off. Remember, they can only have 10 out there now. The overriding emotion you would feel watching this for North Carolina, probably a bit of frustration. Felt like they had an advantage and could not take advantage of it. Maybe a little bit of momentum for Duke, but North Carolina still on the attack as they have been much of this second half. That hasn't changed. A winner will earn a spot into Sunday's ACC championship game. Shot 
not on target. And when you look at the the changes that North Carolina have made, bringing on fresher players have to continue to pepper the goal with their service, with moving the ball quickly, force Duke to have to defend even more as these last 15 minutes or so start to wane down. Just haven't done enough to really force Duke in uncomfortable positions throughout the second 45. Initially when they were up a player, now even so just being numbers even, still have the, the fresher of players with the amount of depth that they have. Can they take advantage of it? Have to. That means move the ball quickly, continue to, to deliver the balls in from those wide areas. Colton to Moore. Yeah, a lot in the middle of the field. Now the Tar Heels try to go back wide. Della Rose hasn't had to do a lot of defending. It's really the two center backs who are tasked with guarding. It's Cat Raider at the moment for Duke. Everybody else for North Carolina is up in the attack. Very different game plans at the moment for each of these teams playing with 10 players. Meza. Blue Devils break it up and off. And, and Raider has to be first to that ball. I mean, Duke is doing such a good job of winning, fighting for any opportunity, and then there's an outlet pass. And if you're going to be the lone striker, you have to, to at least make a play, force Tori Hansen and Julia Dorsey to be uncomfortable and not feel like they can be the ones to win it and collect it easily and then regain and start possession. Colton Patterson all back on at the moment for North Carolina. Dela Rose for Meza. Meza. This is the space Duke's been willing to give and North Carolina's been unable to do anything much dangerous with it. Player going down is Colton. And the whistle is blown. Or was it? Ball out of bounds, so North Carolina carries on. No foul whistled on the play. Colton and Ruthie Jones right there at their near pat, near post. This was the play a few moments ago in the box. Well, it started from an errant header initially, and it was difficult for Duke to be able to, to clear this ball. And that looks like a foul inside the box to me. Doesn't mean it, but just gets the entire player, not the ball. And the referee was in a good position to see it, but doesn't even have to wave it off, just continues to let play happen, ends up resulting in a, a throw-in. Raider gave chase for a moment. Now it's back to Tar Heel ball. I feel like this game has just been a loop on repeat, largely. You give credit to Colton for finally dribbling into the box, creating what looked like it could have been a penalty kick situation for her team. And Tori Hansen has been dynamite from the penalty spot for the Tar Heels this season. She's had a penalty in three of the last four games for North Carolina. Well, and how does that start, Jen? It all starts from a delivery into the box that's missed cleared and then difficult for, for Duke to be able to clear it a second time. And it just shows if you start to pepper balls in, force Duke to have to defend inside their own 18, it gives you opportunities if you're North Carolina to pounce on the second balls. 11th corner kick for North Carolina, ties a season high. Michelle Cooper 
quickly notice. She's back on for Duke, and now it is Cooper and Raider out there together. So North Carolina might have to pay a little more attention to what's happening on this end of the field. Cooper on the turn, lost it. Sentner working against Delaney Graham. And Delaney Graham makes a good play. She was the player involved in the would-be penalty of a few moments ago. Maggie Pierce back on. She and Moore essentially splitting time, that holding midfield position for North Carolina. Meza. Well, the shots similar in this game. They're 17 to three in favor of North Carolina to what they were in the regular season meeting, 15 to two. The scoreboard is not. That was three nothing North Carolina when these two teams met in Durham in September in what was a non-conference matchup. They were not on each other's ACC schedule. So they, of course, made sure they'd get the opportunity to play one another before the postseason came into play. Now a spot in the ACC championship on the line for these two teams. North Carolina who's won it more than anybody else and Duke who's never won it. In fact, the Blue Devils trying to pick up their first ever win against North Carolina in this ACC tournament. Tar Heels have dashed the Duke dreams every time they've advanced to the final. Five times for the Blue Devils in their history. Free kick coming here for North Carolina. The Emily Moxley to take it. Hanson hunting the ball. If Duke was biding their time, as I said, this is the first time in the second half now that we've seen Raider and Cooper on together, two players in the attack, everybody else defending, both teams down a player. Patterson wants it across. Just nothing on the ball to get back into play after the initial service. Well, it's better for North Carolina because they just recognize that they can go a bit quicker as Duke's out of their initial bunker shape and they find some space on this right-hand side. And just a lofted ball in, just rises too early, gets underneath it, jumps almost too quickly, can't make the play on it, sends it over the inline. But to your point, Jen, with Raider and Cooper up top for Duke, if there's ever a time to take some risks, it's now with those two in the attack, especially against a North Carolina team that has been attacking this entire half. Last thing they really want to do is commit numbers behind the ball. They're having to defend right now as Cooper took it all the way almost to the end line. And how much if you're Duke do you gamble and fill that space behind Cooper and Raider? Well, you do have to have to recognize that there are spaces. They have one player up top if you're North Carolina, you have four defenders back for Duke. Those are the moments when you start to gain ground, squeeze the game a bit more, and find a bit of possession yourself. Because with numbers even, this is the question I had once North Carolina received their second yellow card is, does Duke have that mindset to be able to come out of this defensive shape because they have the players in the attack to be able to go after them as well. There are two groups of players on the field. Everybody that you see right here in the attack and then the four <laughs> on the midfield line at the moment. Two attackers for Duke, Cooper and Raider and then, well now there's three defenders back for North Carolina. It's a little less of a numerical advantage, not that it's helped them here. And they've been in the attacking third. Pierce. 
Ivanov Meza had been able to get the run right. I mean, it looked to be well covered there, but that's the type of seam North Carolina just has not been able to consistently find, to Duke's credit, defensively. Under five minutes to play. In fact, just over four in regulation overtime looming in this first semifinal. We still have another one to come later tonight. Notre Dame and Florida State have to bide their time. We'll see what happens with this one. Rules change require you will play two overtime periods this year. It's no more golden goal. Let's see if either of these teams can change the storyline so we don't get there. At the moment, that's where we're headed. Tied 0-0. Nobody able to break through. Ten players on the field for each team. And Delaney Graham has had to do a ton of defending for Duke tonight. Sentner and Colton trying to cause problems on that far side. And Delaney leader all time in starts and minutes played in her Duke career, grad student. Three time all ACC as Cooper has some numbers, goes to her right, just out of the reach of Raider. And it's really good vision from Michelle Cooper because we've seen her thread this ball through before in her career. Do feel like she had the opportunity just to play this near side ball and build into it because they had a 3v3 situation in that quick counter attack. Always going to be difficult from that angle with the pace on the ball and having to swivel her hips to try to play that through to find Raider on the end. Sophie Jones lost it. North Carolina on the turnover, trying to make something of it. Sentner, Jones recovers to help win it back for Duke. A smart play there by Raider. And just put it off of North Carolina. It'll be a Duke throw. Cooper, Dorsey all over her back. And there is eventually a foul call. This will be Duke ball. Michelle Cooper does have two of Duke's three shots on the evening. And now this will be the most Blue Devil players that we've seen on this side of the field since the first half when they were defending it. Now everybody up for the free kick. Emily Royson started every match this season for Duke. Delivers the ball in the box. Meza. The Tar Heel crowd urging her to go. She put the ball right into the defender, though, as Royson got back. Under a minute to play in our first semifinal from Cary, North Carolina. Duke and North Carolina all locked up at zero. Winner will go on to face the winner of our second semifinal, Florida State, Notre Dame. Looks like that one's going to get pushed back a bit. 40 seconds between us and overtime at the moment. And really credit to both of these teams defensively. Duke had to lock things down in the second half, going down a player in the last few minutes of the first half. North Carolina doing an exceptional job of really keeping Michelle Cooper at bay, forcing her back away from goal. Meza couldn't get the contact she wanted. And so overtime <laughs> it is between Duke and North Carolina for a spot in the ACC final.
More soccer still to play in this first semifinal of our ACC Women's Championship from Cary, North Carolina. Duke and North Carolina all tied at zero after 90. Another one coming up later tonight. Well, it was supposed to be 8 Eastern, Florida State, Notre Dame. That's going to be pushed back because overtime is on the way. Now, the sparks of this game that you'll want to revisit can't exactly call them highlights, but they are moments you want to look back on because they were game-changing moments. Started about 30 seconds before halftime. Yeah, it certainly would. And this would be a, a little confrontation with Maggie Graham and Della Peruta. Maggie Graham commits the foul, and afterwards, as you can see, it's blurred out, gives the double finger to Della Peruta. That is a straight red card, be considered abusive language. She's sent off, and that's just a couple minutes before halftime. But keep in mind, Della Peruta does also get a yellow card in that moment and then would commit a challenge halfway through the second half. Unnecessary challenge. She had players back behind, but that'd be second of the game. She sent off, and now the last 20 minutes or so is a 10v10 in this game. <laughs> well, that catches you up. Uh, shots are certainly in favor of North Carolina. As you can see, 18 to 3. Duke did not have a lot of attack. They were doing mostly defending, but North Carolina couldn't figure out a way to break them down. So will overtime be different. Now, this is a change this year in college soccer. We used to have overtime throughout the regular season, and it was golden goal. Well, they got rid of it in the regular season. It's back here for the postseason, but no more golden goal, meaning you have two 10-minute periods regardless. So we've got 20 more minutes that will be on the clock here at Wake Med Soccer Park. After that, of course, we contend with penalty kicks. We've already seen one match in this ACC championship go that direction. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish fending off a feisty pit team that's had a great season as well. Those two teams went to penalty kicks in the quarterfinal on Sunday. Notre Dame making all five of their kicks and advancing 5-4 after the shootout. Plenty of blue in the crowd. You pick your shade, Duke and North Carolina, trying to get to the ACC championship game on Sunday. Duke has been to the final five times, their last coming in 2017. All five times they wound up losing to the Tar Heels. North Carolina, the most prolific team in the ACC, of course, and in the country when it comes to winning championships, 22 national championships, 22 ACC championships, last winning this tournament in 2019. What do you think, Lori? A lot of defending to come here in overtime, <laughs> or, or how do these teams approach this? Well, listen, that has been the story of this game. Both teams doing a really good job. We've seen Duke having to lock things down once they went down a player. North Carolina could be susceptible on the counterattacks. It really well to get numbers behind the ball themselves throughout the run of play. So I expect both teams to, to manage that this game and these, this overtime period defensively but also to go for the win. No one wants to play for the penalty kick, so find ways that you can take advantage of those, those moments. And for North Carolina, I expect them to have the majority of the possession. Can they move it a bit quicker, still continue to find the wide areas, and then find more opportunities to deliver balls in that can cause North Carolina some problems in the box. Like this right here. This is a great start for North Carolina. What a shot, Patterson. No, Colton, excuse me, that was Colton who took the shot. Ruthie Jones making a big save. Career high ninth save for Ruthie Jones, and that was the hardest of them all. Well, coming into this game, Robbie Church said that Ruthie Jones is gonna have to come up with some big saves, knowing that North Carolina is gonna send numbers forward, does well to move her feet. Tar Heels again with the ball in the box. Not too far from the penalty spot, but the offside flag is up. But the ideas are right for North Carolina in this opening few minutes of, of overtime. Again, it's delivery from the deep areas hold up really well and allows for the players underneath for North Carolina to come in and, and join the attack. It's Colton that follows in, low hard shot. Ruthie Jones holds her ground, does well to keep that one out of the back of the net. But that's something that we really didn't see from North Carolina, finding ways to at least draw Duke out in the second 45 of regulation to see if they can send those deep balls in and then have players running in off, 
off of that initial ball and the hold up play. Olivia Moore to Tessa Delarose. Colton Patterson on this side of the attack. Della Rose will get it back. Colton just knocked off the ball. Jenna Royson knows where she wants to go to the ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Now the Freshman of the Year, Kat Rader. Can these two create a winning combination for Duke? Raider back to her left. It did get blocked on the way in. Better, though, in this overtime period from both teams in well, the attack. Well, you're exactly right. Much better. And it starts with Michelle Cooper being an outlet to feet. The last opportunities in regulation, and everything was looking to get in behind for Duke. Easily played defensively for North Carolina. This time they go to the feet, and then they're able to build out between Cooper and Raider. And again, the name of the game, though, throughout this entire match has been defensively and the commitment for North Carolina to track back, get numbers around both of the strikers for Duke, make it play on it, give up the rebound. Well done for North Carolina. Moxley. Has Bella Sember over on the far side of the field. Tori Della Pruta, number nine, is in the middle. Here is Colton Patterson. Hesitated. Delaney Grimm, though, didn't bite. Left footed shot from Sember, and it's another save. We're into double digits for Ruthie Jones. Tenth save of the night for the Duke captain. Della Pruta wanted to get herself on the turn. And interesting to see the choices that Anson Dorrance has gone with here to start this overtime for North Carolina, where he's looking in the attack. Tori De La Peruta has been out the last seven matches. She's on in the middle along with Sember. Colton, sophomore, finds Patterson. Avery Patterson, leading scorer for the Tar Heels on the season, does get herself a look this time in front of the goal. Ruthie Jones, quick reactions, keeping the ball out of the back of the net. Well, it's a really smart play from Patterson because typically we've seen her go inside to her right foot. This time she goes in line with her left foot, looking for the little cutback ball. And you see the numbers of players for Duke facing their own goal. That's why you go to in line, to be able to draw the space in front of your goal in the attack. And then Ruthie Jones having to make a goal line save again. But well done for Patterson to recognize where the space is, go in line, see if she can find the runners coming in late. A little over halfway through our first overtime period. Another one coming from Cary, North Carolina, regardless of what happens here. But North Carolina has had a couple of really good looks. Della Peruta. Bending ball in the box. It is touched by the hard-working Patterson. And, and for, for Duke, if they're going to commit these numbers back defensively, be willing to sit below, they have a numbers up situation. We talked about the two, almost two lines, Jen, with seven back for, for the Duke Blue Devils, and then it's Cooper and Raider up top. 
Shell Cooper tries, decides to try her luck. And Raider and Cooper are forcing North Carolina to have three in the back. So there's a numbers up situation defensively for Duke in their own half. It's just about once they do win the, win the ball, what it, once it is turned over, can they connect that pass, find that free player that then starts the attack for them? Right now, even though their number's down in the attack, North Carolina still finding ways to keep possession, owning the ball, forcing Duke to have to really defend just outside their 18-yard box. Maggie Graham sent off for Duke in the first half. Talia Della Peruta, older sister of Tori, sent off in the second half. So that is why you see each team playing with 10. more as the Tar Heels get it December back to Patterson in the middle December two players there for North Carolina Colton first to it and the recognition from Colton has to be stay wide in those moments that forces Duke to have to ask the question are they going to step to the, the ball carrier or are they going to stay with Colton who stayed wide? When she cuts in centrally, it just makes the, takes the decision out of it, allows them to keep their shape defensively. Time ticking away and overtime number one, just over a minute to play. One minute remaining in the first overtime period. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, our crew in for what feels like it's going to be a long night. Another semifinal still to come. Florida State Notre Dame up next. Shots 20 to 5. Advantage North Carolina in the match. Duke, who went down a player much earlier in the match than North Carolina did, essentially showed you that D on their jersey stood for defense, and they did it well. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Still scoreless in Cary, North Carolina. You might need a snack. Hang in there. We've got another overtime period coming, perhaps. Penalty kicks after that. We'll see. We'll take a short break here. Be back in 60 to Cary. Part of the reason that scoreline has stayed 0-0 has been the work of Ruthie Jones in goal. Told you about the big shot discrepancy. North Carolina with 20 shots in the match, but Ruthie Jones doing her part. Yeah, she certainly has. And this is something that Robbie Church knew coming into this game, that she was going to have to come up big, especially in overtime, making her presence known, holding her ground, keeping herself big. And on this one, a little bit of a ricochet off of her own team collects that one smothers it keeps it out of the back of the net and she's been a huge part especially as this Duke Blue Devils team has had to sit back defensively in a low block and really absorb a lot of attack from North Carolina career high 10 saves for Ruthie Jones both she and her brother Daniel having terrific athletic careers for the Duke Blue Devils Daniel of course now in the NFL the Giants and Ruthie finishing up her career at Duke Hopefully on a high note, she would tell you. Postseason is here. Duke trying to make it to the ACC championship, something they have never won, if you can believe that. Last time they were there was 2017. So one more 10-minute overtime period coming your way. 
If we remain tied after that, then we go to the shootout. Three shots in that first overtime period, 2-1 the advantage North Carolina, but both teams did get some good looks, better than they had, quite frankly, in the second half. You never know what might happen in the postseason. We don't have overtime in the regular season anymore, so of course we had to pick up one here as we get to the ACC championship now. North Carolina, 22 times they've won this ACC tournament. They missed out altogether last year for the first time in their story program's history. They're trying to get back to the final. They won it their last five appearances in this tournament. They made it to the final, excuse me, won it twice. Last one coming in 2019. And here we go, final 10 minutes on the clock. More to Meza. Cox back in centrally for North Carolina in the attack. And Al Piper has been playing some big minutes here for Duke down the stretch. Freshman out of San Jose, California. Everybody's responsibilities perhaps shifted somewhat from what they looked like at the beginning of this match for both teams as now each team out there playing with 10 rather than 11. Katie Groff looking for Michelle Cooper, who did take some contact from Hansen upon receiving the ball. Foul is whistled. And Michelle Cooper does just so well with using her body, understanding where the pressure is coming from, and draws the foul against Hansen on that one. You know, anytime teams are in these moments, Jen, it's just important to remember. You only need one good look on frame. So continue to play for that. Be decisive in your decision making. Emily Royson on the free kick. Everybody's already waving their arms, trying to help the referee out as to what the call is. Duke said corner. Indeed it is. First one for the Blue Devils since the first half. And their third of the match. <laughs> Somebody's got to go over and take it, however. Looks like it will be Kat Raider to do the honors. ACC Freshman of the Year. And these are the moments. Give your team the opportunity to get on the end of it. Good delivery. Drive it in. Away from Hansen. Piper picks it up. Still not clear by North Carolina. Hansen, the leader in minutes played for the Tar Heels this season, found Patterson who was tripped. Julia Dorsey having to play more minutes probably than was the plan for her coming into tonight as she's been out with injury the last four matches for North Carolina. Substitution wise, you are allowed one re-entry in overtime. So in the entirety of the two 20 minute periods, you could go out, come back in once. Good early ball, that Cox flicks on. Moxley. Tar Heels using the whip, seeing if they can pull open some space. Drop it 
Chico blocking it. And it did go out of bounds, the assistant referee says. So that's going to be a corner kick for North Carolina. Tar Heels already have exceeded their season high. This is their 12th. Mackenzie Pluck, one of the veterans on this Duke team, comes back onto the field, replaces Cal Raider. And Allie Sentner, player who's just come on for North Carolina. Here's the corner. Jones in some traffic. Does make the grab. Yeah, great play from Ruthie Jones. Come off her line. If you're going to come out, you got to keep a hold of it. Does well through traffic as she's falling down, keeps a hold of it. Another really good play from the Duke goalkeeper. Katie Groff, Pluck with a look over her shoulder. Where is Cooper? She is right there receiving the ball. Somehow brings it down. Cooper down to the ground. There is no whistle. She appears to be hurt. North Carolina had a close play in the box in the second half. That was not called. There was no whistle on the play. They may have felt they deserved the penalty. Now Duke perhaps in that boat. Well, just look at this touch from Michelle Cooper. Brings it down with the outside of her foot. Sets herself up perfectly. This is a tough call because she does look like she's off balance already. Both of the players are colliding, looking to see if they can get on the end of the ball. Great first touch from Michelle Cooper from a really tight angle, difficult angle. And both players going to ground. You know, after the no call at the other end, I do believe this is a good no call at this end as well, but what an exceptional player. I mean, to make something out of that, off of that ball with that first touch with Michelle Cooper, always a tight angle. Credit to Raider to, to get that one off, to be able to find the space in between. That's your ACC <laughs> Offensive Player of the Year. Excuse me, it was Pluck the one that played that ball into Cooper. Good to see her back to her feet. Time will tell if it's too soon to start talking penalty kick stats. We'll see. That's where we're headed if we stay tied after this second overtime period. A couple of players go crumbling down. Sentner and Colton working together along with Moore on that far side for North Carolina. Royson defending. Duke ball. And, and it hasn't been pretty in the attack for Duke by any means, especially once they went down to 10 players. But tons of credit for this team as a unit, defending individually, doing a really good job to win their battles. And for as much of possession that North Carolina has had, hasn't given them very many clear looks on frame or on goal throughout the second 45 and, and throughout this overtime period as well. And beyond. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> the second 45. And, and if anything, and I feel like Duke should take that last play with Michelle Cooper and, and McKenzie Pluck playing that ball through is a bright spot. We haven't cre created much, but we can still cause problems. So let's step up our line a little bit. We're numbers even now with North Carolina getting the double yellow card with Del Peruta. Can we gain ground? Can we put North Carolina under pressure as well? Sentner on the ball now for North Carolina. A couple of the most dangerous shots, just not on target in this match for the Tar Heels. And to be fair, I think actually at least one of them was one that forced one of those career high number of saves out of Ruthie Jones. 10 saves on the night for the Blue Devil Keeper.
North Carolina co-champions with Florida State in the ACC regular season. They've won their last six games. Outscored their opponents 15 to one in that stretch, but no goals to be had for either team yet tonight. North Carolina always willing to pick up that second ball. Patterson still going strong for the Tar Heels. She'll take her shot, it's off the post! <laughs> Leading score for North Carolina, nearly giving the Tar Heels the lead with just about two minutes to play in our second overtime period. Denied by the woodwork. And you feel like that has to, to deal with a bit of fatigue for Duke. Just playing balls to no one now. Have to give those two front runners opportunities to get something on it. One has to check defeat, one has to go in behind. Another one of those balls and talking head song comes to mind on the road to nowhere. But we are headed somewhere, and that is a penalty kick shootout. If we manage to stay scoreless for the last 40 seconds or so here. Cooper causing problems for the Tar Heel defense. And again, I think she was already losing her balance. However, a foul was called, a yellow card shown, and this will be a free kick for Duke. But it is a smart play for Michelle Cooper because I do believe she knows that she's lost her balance, just gets herself in between the player and the ball. This time it's Moxley, and then sells it really well. And this is a player that's been on the wrong side of a lot of fouls. Does well to get on the end of this, blocks it initially. There is a little bit of a push for Moxley. She will get the yellow card. It does set Duke up for Sophie Jones to be on the, on, over this set piece in a really dangerous area just outside the 18 yard box. Does this semifinal match come down to this? Sophie Jones for Duke, looking for the corner, punched away by Allen. Pluck couldn't do anything with it. Delaney Graham, the only player other than Ruthie Jones left back for Duke as they did put everybody else up for that. Free kick opportunity here is Sophie Jones. 10 second countdown is on. Blue Devils with numbers. L. Piper shot. Too high. We will be headed to the shootout to determine our first participant in Sunday's ACC championship. North Carolina came the closest, but couldn't quite find the back of the net. Well, they certainly had the majority of possession, the more majority of chances. Here's the last one from Patterson. It starts with a turnover in the middle of the field from Sophie Jones, then regained possession, and Patterson just unleashes one unfortunate off the, off the post. And here's the last opportunity from Duke, forcing a big save off the line of Allen, off a set piece from Sophie Jones. And then Pluck, just on the follow-up, doesn't really commit whether she's gonna go with her head, whether she's gonna get with her foot. And then North Carolina is able to clear it out of danger in the end. Well, all danger not averted yet because now we decide a winner from the penalty kick shootout. That's coming your way when we come back. Everybody on their feet getting set for this shootout to determine our first participant in the ACC championship on Sunday. Will it be North Carolina or will it be Duke? Coming up later, approximately 30 minutes after we finish this one, Florida State and Notre Dame will battle for the other spot. But first, we have some business to tend to. Best of five as the teams get set for their shots from the mark. Katie Groff, the first player up for Duke. Get 
ready to line up with the left foot. And we'll see how she starts off the Blue Devils. Saved! North Carolina faced one penalty kick during the regular season, and Emmy Allen saved it. That's how she starts off this shootout. And it's a great way to start the shootout. A big run up, strong run up from Groff. But then in the end, you just felt like it was a bit predictable and a great area for Allen to make the save. Not too low, not too high. Reads it well the entire way to get North Carolina off to a really good start. Well, Tori Hanson has taken every penalty kick for North Carolina this season. She's made all four of them, including three in the last four games. Hanson. Boy, Ruthie Jones got a piece of it. She knew she just about had it, but it does give North Carolina the advantage. And she keeps her streak going, just opens up her hips to place that into the, the right corner. Not a really well taken penalty kick. Ruthie Jones gives a hand on it, but enough power on it to not to be able to keep it out of the back of the net. Well done from hands and not easy to step up and have to take all of the penalty kicks for your team and continuously put them away. This is a player, and Emmy Dewar has only appeared in seven matches all season. She's a senior, she's a captain. She's up next for Duke. Dewar got it this time. Duke on the board. And love the celebration from Dewar. Just steps up. Good bend, good pace, out of the reach of Allen. Gets Duke on the score sheet. Rachel Jones up next now for North Carolina. Player who missed the first 10 matches of the season with injury, but plenty of experience. She's been with the Tar Heels since 2018 in her fifth year. Was an All-American a couple of seasons ago. Rachel Jones, and once again, Ruthie Jones finds the ball with a hand, but just can't keep it out. Well, it's a well-struck penalty kick because she keeps it low, makes it difficult for Ruthie Jones to get down in time, to have a strong left hand to be able to keep it out. And Ruthie Jones, once again, guessing correctly, reading it, but enough pace to allow for North Carolina to be up two to one. ACC Freshman of the Year, Kat Raider. Now for the Blue Devils, trying to keep pace. Had their first one saved, Raider gets another. And a bit of a, a cheeky run up for Raider. Just trying to off foot Allen, does well. Easy finish in the end. Starts off directly behind the ball. And there's a little bit of the run up and then just places in the opposite direction of the way that Allen's diving. Smooth finish from the freshman. North Carolina perhaps playing with a little more pressure, less pressure here as they have the advantage. Their keeper made the save. Duke needs one of those. They haven't gotten it so far. Ali Sittner now keeping the Tar Heels a perfect three for three. Well, a bright spot in this game. Sittner with her movement, both sides of the ball. Convicted run up and just knows where she's going from the start. Just places it into the near post. Pass Ruthie Jones. Well taken penalty kick from Sittner, who's been such a good piece to this North Carolina Tar Heels team. Some young players being put in big spots right now for both teams. Devin Lynch, freshman for the Blue Devils at the spot. Lynch gets it. They're being put in tough spots, Jen, but rising to the occasion, another great penalty kick. This time from Lynch. Knows exactly where she wants to go, opens up her hips, and just out of the, the reach of Allen. Now it is Avery Patterson to put the Tar Heels back in the lead. Leading scorer for North Carolina on the season. 
Patterson gets the corner. North Carolina still perfect. Well, Patterson makes no mistake about it. Direct run up, just low hard to the far post. And once again, it's Ruthie Jones that guesses correctly, but there's enough placement into the corner, enough power on it. Can't get down in time. And now it comes down to Michelle Cooper, the ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Must convert here for Duke to have hope. Emmy Allen saved the first one she faced. Deep breath from Cooper. Find in the corner. Calm as you please. So now Duke just has to hope their goalkeeper can come up with a save or they find a miss from North Carolina. And Emmy Allen does well to get a a strong left hand on this one, but it's a, it's the placement from Cooper as Allen is, is diving just above the area where she wants to make the save. Well done from Cooper. Bella Sember trying to win it for North Carolina. Save! Ruthie Jones coming up with the save her team needed to stay alive. Well, she's got a hand on a few of them. This time she makes a huge save on Simber to keep her team alive. We saw Emmy Allen make the save on the initial one from Duke. This time Ruthie Jones coming up in bit big for Duke Blue Devils. Keep that one out of the back of the net. And this one tied at four. Of course we needed more than the allotted <laughs> five in this match, the way this has gone. So now it's essentially sudden death rounds. Back and forth we go to see who could get an advantage. L. Piper, another freshman, step into the spot for Duke. Piper giving the Blue Devils the lead in the shootout. Now it is North Carolina who must answer. Well, Piper coming on as a substitute, making some big plays in the run of play, this time stepping up. Goes the opposite way of Allen. Easy finish for Piper. And the first time that we see the Duke Blue Devils up in this pen penalty kick shootout. So it will be Tessa Delarose, freshman who's had an outstanding year in the back line for the Tar Heels. Has to make it, or Duke's moving on. Delarose did her job. And under pressure, these players are rising to the occasion. This time, Della Rose, as a freshman, just calmly steps up, places that one into the back of the net. Sophie Jones, one of the captains, a senior for this Blue Devil team, started the last 71 matches that she has appeared in in her Duke career. Once again, to try to give Duke the lead. Jones, that corner's been good to the Blue Devils. Stepping up with the PK exactly the same way that she plays this game. Cool and calm, collected into the near post. Great finish from the senior. Now it'll be a sophomore from London, England, Ruby Grant for North Carolina. And with Duke going first and now getting back even. North Carolina always having to find the answer for this shootout to continue. Grant versus Jones, got her hand there again. Boy, Ruthie Jones has been good but not quite good enough to stop the balls that have come her way. She had one massive save. And, and Ruthie Jones really does read this entire way. And you see the reaction from the Duke Blue Devils. Thought maybe Ruthie Jones was gonna be able to keep that one out. 
now another veteran for the Blue Devils, Mackenzie Pluck at the spot. This is round eight of the shootout. Save! Allen gives her team a chance to win it. And in these shootouts, you asked your goalkeepers to come up with at least one big save. This time, Allen comes up with two against Pluck. Gets down quickly, two strong hands to bat that one away and give North Carolina the opportunity to win this game. Emily Moxley, the player with that opportunity, the junior from Cary, North Carolina, transferred into this Tar Heel program a couple of years ago. Moxley in the moment sends North Carolina to the final. It was a battle from the beginning between these two teams. No score through regulation and overtime, but Duke once again sent home by the Tar Heels in the ACC tournament. North Carolina a perfect 13-0 against their Tobacco Road rivals in this championship. And here's the game-winning penalty kick. Just another well-placed penalty kick from Moxley to send her team to the championship on Sunday. And what a rivalry this is. Both of these teams fighting to the end, defensively doing the job necessary, really slowing the attack for both sides. You can see what this means to North Carolina after missing out on the tournament last year, getting back to the championship this year and a hard-fought game all the way through penalty kicks. Just an incredible resume and record that North Carolina has in this event. But look, this is a redshirt freshman, Emmy Allen in goal, who had two massive saves in that penalty kick shootout to help her team to the final. So now we know one of the teams who will be playing on Sunday Will North Carolina face Florida State, who they shared the regular season title with in the ACC, or will it be Notre Dame? The Irish having a tremendous season of their own right. Well, that one is coming up next, so stick around. Approximately 30 minutes, we will have our second semifinal coming your way. This one's all over after the shootout. North Carolina advancing. For Lori Lindsay, I'm Jen Hildreth. We'll say goodbye for now from Carrie.